The U.S. dollar is getting stronger. Why? That's just weird to me. Um, let me show you a chart here. This is the U.S. dollar to the euro. And you can see we're going to we'll start from here. It's, uh, it's at 82 cents per. Uh, so basically $1 by 82 cents in euros. So it's an 18% discount. Now it's at a, it's gone up basically 12% in the last, not even the last year, the last eight months, nine, 10 months. Why? It's just odd to me. Check this out. That's a year against a euro. If we look against the, uh, I can't, the British pound, I can't remember. I think it's, yeah, it's gone up a little bit against the British pound too. Not huge, but it's gone up. Check this out against the Japanese yen. Look at that. Because of uh, the China, is that what we're concerned with? The Japanese uh, being, I don't know, it's just weird to me. Does Taiwan get a currency? Let's see, Taiwan. Yeah, Taiwan, new dollar. Yeah, definitely. So look at that. Huh. Anyway, what has it gone against Canadian? I don't think Canadian dollar has gone up much, if anything. It's, yeah, it's actually gone down a little bit. But we're still well above par with Canadians, even though... Uh, has gone down quite a bit over the last uh, two years. That's interesting. Let's take about 10 years for Canadians. Yeah, we've gone up. So why has the U.S. dollar gone up in the last, you know, less than the last year, basically the last six months? Interesting. The global economic structure, I think. So here's, move this over here, okay. Here's Martin Armstrong uh, writing at uh, from uh, Armstrong Economics, writing at LouRockwell.com, anti-state, anti-war, pro-market. That's exactly where I am. Uh, he says capital flows confirm war is coming, and he says the greatest danger to America will be a strong dollar. Asia money flows from the from the Asian markets to the United States, third world to the United States, Europe to the United States. Basically, when the signs of chaos, everyone buys the safest investment, which is the U.S. dollar. Why? Uh, because right here, if I can find it, hold on a second. Uh, historically, the capital flows to the dollar during World War under the assumption that tanks will not be landing on the beaches of Virginia or California. Uh, this will tend to support the dollar, but not long term. I completely agree. Biden's sanctions attacking individual Russians have turned into a nightmare. The Czech Republic is seizing all assets of any Russians based solely on their ethnicity as ethnicity as they were doing during the Japanese during World War II in the U.S. And now even Switzerland is doing the same thing. The sanctions are not going to cause regime, regime change and the overthrow of Putin. Well, uh, this is outright hatred of Russians as a people and they'll have no choice but to bond with China in an all-out war against the outrageous tyranny that we're dealing with right now in the West. The neocons are bringing the entire world back to destruction, which some argue is part of their plan to enable their plan to build back better, which necess necessitate, necessitates the destruction of the current energy system. Yep. And the reduction of the population to make Bill Gates sleep better at night. 100%. Our model has always picked up the shifts in capital flows that precede war. This time we are witnessing outflows not just from China, but all of the emerging markets on a scale that is unprecedented. Yeah, I, uh, I don't know what to make of this, man. That is uh, that is kind of con concerning for sure. But anyway, you can see it with your own big fat eyes. The U.S. dollar to the euro, and I'm just looking at the euro because that's our primary competitor for you know the dollar reign supreme. If we go back to one year, a significant increase in the value of a dollar. The dollar, dollar is getting stronger relative to foreign competitors. It's just a fact. Now, if you want to say, well, look at the Australian dollar, Josh. Oh, does anyone care about Australia? No. In fact, Australia is a fascist state. We know that. So over the, the Australian dollar has actually come back down to par, it looks like go to five years but who cares i mean I, yeah with you would think that'd be concerned because australia is right there within the spit distance of china uh but let's actually let's look at china the one and i think we're actually gone down against the chinese dollar yeah we have um let's go to one year though 
So I don't know what to make of it. I just know, I mean, but China is, is, is a different uh, atmosphere than we are. So the dollar is getting stronger, which is interesting to me. And uh, I, you know, with Biden call for regime change in uh, Russia, I mean, think about it. If, if you're Xi Jinping and Biden's calling for regime change in Russia and saying Russia's a war criminal, uh, let's go back to Armstrong economics. What, uh, what are you going to do there? All right, right here. It pains me to have to write this, but clearly those who understand where this is going is to World War III. And make no mistake about it, this is intentional. Even the official data has revealed that foreign investors have sold a net $5.5 billion of Chinese bonds in the last few weeks. Biden has stupidly threatened China if they support Russia, that they will suffer the same sanctions. This is just insane. Is deliberately trying to destroy the world global economy. Even NATO said at a press conference that China must not provide economic or military support for the Russian invasion. The previous day, he accused Beijing of spreading blatant lies and misinformation. What they're calling misinformation is anything that challenges the West. They want war for the demands of Putin are reasonable. Ukraine remains neutral, surrender Donbass and Crimea, which are ethnic Russians. Uh, when Zelensky passed the law, that language, the language law that Russia is no longer official language in the Ukraine, it's essential to tell the Spanish speakers, if you don't speak English, get out. So let me show you something else. So here's a map that shows which countries support uh, Western government sanctions against Russia and which do not. Uh, you can see Japan right here in South Korea. Look at the menace of China. Yeah, they, uh, they better hope the, the NATO is going to defend these guys. Um, I'm not sure what country that is right there. But anyway, look at these right here. And that's probably why China... Actually, let's see about this, this South Korea. I don't know what the South Korea dollar is. South Korea, uh, the won. All right, let's see what the South Korean dollar is doing. Um, yeah, same thing. The South Korea dollar is dropping against the U.S. dollar. Isn't that interesting? So you got China, South Korea... Uh, dropping like a ton of bricks uh, against the dollar. Europe dropping like a ton of bricks against the dollar. So there's Russia, there's China, um, and here's Russia, uh, Japan right there. I'm surprised Australia dollar has gone up. That's interesting to me. Canadian dollar has gone up um, against the dollar. Not much, but a little bit, because again, not likely to land on the shores of Canada. But these are the countries that are imposing uh, sanctions against Russia. And these are the countries that aren't all of South America, Mexico, all of Africa, the vast majority of the, of the Asian in the, in the uh, East Asian, uh, India, none of them are. Isn't that interesting? So th this is where the divide is going to be. The modern white, essentially, countries and then Japan and South Korea, the West, quote unquote, um, is the bif bifurcated economy that's coming. And I, I'm not sure it's going to be good. I, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be good. It's going to be different, that's for sure. And I think it's going to be expensive. And I think it's going to be a fiefdom. And as such, uh, I think there's a lot of initial reaction to war that says, let's buy the, the safest bet. But I, I don't know. That, that's going to be interesting. So check this out. Um, yeah, I'll do another video on this. I will. All right, see you.